Hey, what's up? It's Nash, uh, giving you a walkthrough of Hamariku Gardens in Tokyo, Japan. I stumbled across these when, uh, when I was taking my daily walk from Kachidoki to Shinjuku and back. My, uh, my five-hour little jaunt, and I thought I'd pop in, and it turned out to be really nice. So this is the uh, entryway to Hamariku Gardens in Tokyo, Japan. It's not what a lot of people would consider to be the best or top or like nicest garden in Tokyo, but I would say probably number two uh, behind the Kigu Garden and the Emperor's Garden at number three. This place has uh, a lot of water and trees, and of course it's a garden, so lots of flowers. It's even got a couple of birds, which, you know, for Tokyo, that's, uh, that's pretty nice. Um, I guess it's uh, appropriate since originally this place was a falconry ground for the royal family uh, before it was turned into a duck hunting ground. But here you got some, some tea houses. Uh, this is the uppermost view of Hamariku Garden from the highest point. You can see the pond and the tea houses. I like the juxtaposition of the city in the background, kind of foreboding. Um, like I said, it's pretty close to Katidoki, so I'm pretty sure that's uh, Kachidoki that you are seeing in the background, or at least close to it. Um, but yeah, so originally in the 17th century, this place was a falconry ground, and then it became a duck hunting ground in like the 1800s. So what you're seeing is a duck blind. So this place was originally full of shallow uh, shallow water and they would release domesticated ducks in here to lure in wild ducks and the people would just chill out in these duck blinds and murder their food. Uh, not too bad. Pretty clever, I would say, using domesticated ducks to lure in wild ducks. But you'll notice the, uh, the pond splits off into these little moats here with nice little bridges over it. That's because there used to be a, uh, a palace over here. It was like a secondary residence to one of the royal families. This is... Uh, the outskirts of the garden, uh, like I said, it borders Kachidoki, so that should be Kachidoki. And then this isn't a moat or anything, that's, uh, that's just part of the ocean uh, coming in here. So that's, uh, that's one of the borders of the garden, it's pretty nice. Uh, lots of walking paths, since people are supposed to come in here and relax and, and walk around and chill out. Um, go down this path here. This is a, an Inabu shrine. The original one actually collapsed in June 20th, 1894 from an earthquake, but they rebuilt it uh, perfectly because they're super good at doing that. This shrine gives me Okinawan vibes, but that's not because it's related really in any way. It's just because all shrines kind of give me that, a bit of their architecture and, and a bit of their uh, sigil work reminds me of Okinawa for whatever reason, but I really I really like shrines and whatever, so it's nice that that's there and you can visit it. Um, it is a little partially walled off, but not too bad. Uh, this used to be a, like a grain house also right there. I don't know. Uh, I'm sure they don't make crops here anymore. Uh, they, they, they just keep everything nice so people can come and chill out on the manicured garden lawn and, and play frisbee and relax and all that. Um, occasionally people will get dressed up and then take pictures of themselves here, like these girls right here wearing nice uh, yukata summer kimono thing. And So I decided I'd creep on them for a little bit and get a nice picture. I love that picture! Uh, here we got some moats. Can't tell if these little drops in the water are uh, rain sprinkles or hundreds of thousands of mosquitoes, but knowing the area, I'm going to go with mosquitoes. I don't see any over here. Uh, this is uh, one of the tea houses, of which there are three adjacent to a gift shop. Got some uh, tenugui hand towels, popular for, you know, souvenirs and whatnot. Super versatile. Uh, old people, of course, you're going to see old people. It's, it's Japan. They have like a 0% birth rate, pretty much. And then finally, the, uh, the garden part of the gardens. Just lots of well-manicured flowers, um, aesthetics, and stone lanterns. There's nothing for scale to let you know, but those stone lanterns are huge. They're easily like two meters tall. So over six feet tall for these stone lanterns, but they're really well done. And like I said, you can see some nature in here. We got some birds, and by birds I mean pigeons and crows, because that's what you get in Tokyo. But 
you gotta take what you can get. Normally you just get throngs of human beings wandering around everywhere, which is uh, also what we got here, but we got a nice wide open space that's so a little bit better. And the coup de gras of Hamariku Gardens, a 300 year old pine tree called 300 year old pine, because it was planted in 1709. It's not even the oldest tree in Tokyo, but it's still super cool. Um, still got kind of a bonsai vibe to it. So that's the walkthrough to uh, Hamariku Garden. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, uh, maybe give me a, I don't know, a little subscribe or whatever, you know. If you enjoyed the video, let me know so that I can keep uh, making more of these videos to you. Uh, Nash out!